What's up everybody welcome back to channel code X I'm your host of Zill and in today's video we will learn how to create base HTTP client using that you can call every single API inside your application and not only that in part two of this video I will show you how to handle all the network errors plus all the API exception using a single method so make sure you subscribe the channel and we're gonna start right after this intro So we have pretty simple structure. We just have this page with this single button. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a service folder where we're going to keep all the files required for base HTTP client. And let us also create a file for app exceptions. We're going to create all the exceptions later on in this video. So for now, let's focus on the base client. And also let me just get rid of this simulator because we're just gonna write a lot of code and we are not going to see anything result, like any result on the screen as of now. So inside base client, you're gonna write the get, post, delete, or any other method which you want to call to the API, right? So we're gonna start with get and just let me write a simple signature of the method. We have a get method and it's going to accept two parameters. One is the base URL and other is the API. So we are just keeping the base domain name and the API separately. Now to make a HTTP call, we need a library. So I've already executed this command and you can do that also to get the HTTP library included. And we're just going to import that library using import HTTP dart and we're going to give it a allies name also. So I'm going to call it HTTP. Now let's go ahead and call the actual HTTP get method. And what it accepts is a URI. Now what is URI? Basically it's a parsed or it's a formatted way of a URL. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new variable where I will concat base URL and API. And of course, at the same time, I'm going to parse it to a valid URI format. And that URI, we're going to pass to the HTTP get method. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and change the signature of the method to future because it's going to return the data in later future. And of course, the return type will be dynamic because it can return anything, right? And also we'll mark this method async so that we can use await and get the response back. Now we have pretty much implemented the get API. Now what can happen when we call get? It may happen that the internet connection is not available or somehow the URL which you are trying to get is not reachable. So we're gonna wrap this get call inside try catch and we're gonna act on different different exceptions. So first thing let's handle the socket exception. All right. And it may also happen that this API took longer to respond. So we can have a timeout exception on this API. So that's how you create multiple catch scenarios in Dart. And we will do the implementation of socket and timeout later on. But let's go ahead and process the response which we get from HTTP get. And for that, I'm going to create one method which will process basically this HTTP response. So let's go ahead and define a method which will return a dynamic uh, value. We don't know really what it's going to be. And here we need input as this HTTP response. So let's go ahead and define a parameter to this method. So I'm going to put a switch case on status code of response. And there are different status code if you are aware of HTTP call. So 200 is the success status code and there are different others like 400, 500, 300 and all those things. So let's go ahead and implement for 200 case, which is the success case. And here I'm reading the response from body bytes. This will help you when you're working with other language than English. So make sure you do UDF decode also on this body bytes because it's UDF 8 encoded. All right, so we have the final JSON response with us. I'm just going to return that to the calling method. All right, and now we are going to handle uh, other cases of HTTP status code. You can handle as many as a status code you want, depending on the server response you're getting. So I'm just going to handle uh, some common ones like 400, bad request, 401, unauthorized, and 500, which is internal server error. Now we need to bifurcate these cases. So I'm going to create multiple exceptions for each case. Now let's go to the exception file, which we created earlier in this tutorial. 
and we're going to define all the exceptions. But first, we'll define the base exception. So I'm going to call it app exception, which implements the real exception uh, API. Okay. And here I'm going to define few properties like the message and the prefix and the URL, which caused this exception. And let us also mark all this parameter optional by providing a square bracket so that user doesn't have to provide name while calling it. Now let's go ahead and create different exceptions for different status code of the API. First, we will create the bad request exception, which happens when you call the API specifying some wrong parameters. So this is gonna be a very simple implementation. We're just gonna ask a caller to provide the message and the URL which caused this exception. And we're gonna call the base or the super okay with the same parameters and for the prefix we will add something from our side so that we know what really happened and who is calling that okay and the same thing we are going to repeat for as many exception as you want to handle so currently we handle the bad request exception with this url i'm just going to duplicate this couple of more times so that i can handle different conditions like fetch data exception then api not responding exception unauthorized exception and others if you want to do so now let's get back to the base client and throw the different exception at the different cases. So for 400, I'm going to throw the bad request exception. And remember that in bad request, your server is going to give you some response, right? What went wrong? So you want to throw that back for the user information. So I'm going to pass that as a message. And for the URL, I'm going to get from response.request.url and we'll make it to string. Similar way, we're going to handle the 401 and 403. For that, I'm going to say throw unauthorized exception, right? And the rest implementation will remain same. But for the 500 and the default case, like any other cases, we're going to say fetch data exception. And in this case, it may happen that you don't get any response back from the server. So I'm just going to write the message as error occurred with this status code. It's that simple. So we have handled almost all the cases, like the basic cases, right? So you can handle as many as you want, as I said. And we are returning this response JSON in a case of 200, which is a success case. So let's get back to the get method and return this processed response back to the calling method. Perfect. Now it's time for membership announcement. Luis Vitela has taken pro membership. Thank you so much for that. And you can also support channel code X by taking channel membership or buying coffee on buy me coffee, or at least by doing like subscribe and comment on this video. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now we're going to handle this socket exception and timeout exception as well. So in case of socket exception, I'm going to throw fetch data exception or you can implement another exception for that and I'm just going to pass the message as no internet connection if that makes sense right and this message you can use for dialogue or something like that you can just read the message from the exception and show it to the user if that if that makes sense right so now we are going to handle the timeout exception and basically how we will handle that we will throw the timeout ourself whenever the call exceeds a particular limit of time. So I'm going to define the duration for myself and let it call a 20 second duration. So let's define a static constant for that, right? And after 20 seconds, it's gonna throw the exception and how we'll handle inside timeout exception, I'm going to throw our customized exception, which we have created as API not responding exception and you can pass whatever message you want to show it to user or like you just want to say some nice message like this took a little bit longer to respond or any way you want to handle that okay so basically at this point we have handled all the exception our API can trigger like the internet connection timeout exception and different HTTP status code so let's go ahead and duplicate this get method to create our post method it's exactly the same apart from it has one more extra parameter for the body and the signature of course it's a post so let's add one more parameter in the method for payload object and this will be dynamic because you can send your object you can send map or anything but make sure that whatever you send is json parsable because we have to json decode before sending it to the http so i'm going to just decode whatever payload object you have sent and then we will pass this to http post method inside 
body parameter perfect so the post method is ready now similar way you can create delete and other methods if you want to do so so our base client is almost ready now it's the time to go to our test file and call the API to see whether the base client is working or not. So I'm going to create an instance of base client and we're going to call the get API. And let's also make this method async and await so that we can wait for the response from base client. All right. So once we get the response, we want to print somewhere. So I'll just say print response so that we can see in the console what has been fetched from the internet. Perfect. So let's go ahead and find out some dummy API. So for that, I'm going to use this JSON placeholder.com and you can just copy the entire domain as a base URL and rest of that as an API. So let's go ahead and fire our simulator to see whether our implementation is working or not. So I'm going to click on the test button and we have the JSON response back with us, right? And that's what we want to achieve with this simple implementation of base client at any place inside your application you can call get post or any api and also we'll see what happens if you call wrong url or some mistake in the api so it's gonna throw with some exception and that time we have customized it with our exception which is fetch data exception so if you get that message you can display it to user in a nice formatted way so in the next video we're gonna see how to handle those exception the fetch data exception, the API not responding exception, the bad request exception with a proper nice message so that you don't have to handle at every place you call the API. So this was such easy implementation. In part two of this video, I will show you how to handle all those errors and exceptions with a single method where you can show dialogues, where you can show message or you can log them in a single place. So make sure you subscribe the channel for notification. Hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.